yes, I caught some serious gas and bought the Nikon ZF. Uh, this is me, just, no, it's not me justifying it, but I want to talk about the reasons why I bought this camera and how I'm going to use it. Basically, my first impression, uh, this is also the first time I'm going to use it outside in the real world. We are on the way to Düsseldorf. I'm with my wife who's filming and my son in the back. We are doing a little family vacation. But uh, if you're a freelancer, you never have a day off. And if you're a freelancer that also has a YouTube channel, then you never have a vacation. So <laughs> this is also going to be a two-part series of videos I'm doing. First, we have this family trip. And then next week, I'm going to Denmark on a little road trip with my filmer David, where I will bring the ZF, take some photos on the coastline of Denmark. Pretty excited about that. And we also have a new lens with us. This is the Sigma 10 to 80 mm 2.8 wide angle zoom for Fuji X mount. Uh, Sigma Germany uh, sent me this lens to review. And this is the lens that I was waiting for for a long time because I don't have a autofocus wide angle zoom lens. And this seems to be the perfect lens for my XS20 for vlogging, for filming, uh, you know, in tight environments. And this is currently at 10 millimeters. And can you zoom in to 18? So this, this should be 18 millimeters, constant aperture 2.8 and autofocus seems to be very good. And I'm also going to use this lens on both of these trips so you can see how that performs for video. Uh, so basically you get two videos in one. I see you later in Düsseldorf, four more hours to go. I need to concentrate. By the way, there isn't going to be any epic travel montage because I don't have the budget for it. This is a family vacation after all. Nice shoes, man. Nice shoes, man. Nice shoes, man. What's up, guys? We finally arrived. Uh... Okay, so we just checked in. This is the 25 hours hotel here in Düsseldorf, not sponsored. We paid for our rooms. We have a nice view of uh, Düsseldorf here. And I'm filming this on the Nikon ZF with the 40 mm F2 using an ND filter and face tracking is uh, activated. So let me know how it looks. This was also one of the reasons why I wanted this camera because it's such a good hybrid camera. Most of my photo centric cameras can't really do video very well. And uh, this is what I use for my YouTube videos. Fujifilm XS20, small microphone or lavalier mic. And then now we have this tiny Sigma 10 to 80 millimeter. This is how much it goes out at 10 millimeter. And this is uh, at 18 millimeter. And it comes uh, with a lens hood, which just clicks onto the lens, which is a little weird and something I need to get used to. And what I really love about it is that it's also a 67 millimeter filter thread. So I can use my ND filters on this. Most of my lenses, almost all of them, have the same uh, filter thread. So uh, pretty convenient for me. Yeah, so far so good. And uh, let's switch cameras and film on the Fujifilm and talk a little bit about the Nikon. Okay, we now switch cameras and I have my Nikon ZF in my hands again. So um, this is the stone gray version. This is a special edition you can get when you order from Nikon directly. And basically they give you just a more premium leather compared to the black one. This one has a very smooth texture. It does look kind of like a stone surface and they have it here on the front and then it also goes around. The back uh, of the LCD screen has also this uh, custom leather. And then here on top, you also have it. I was worried that it would look a little too flashy, too attention seeking, but that's actually not the case. The gray is very dark in my opinion. It just depends how the light is hitting the camera. You might remember that I tried the Nikon uh, DF um, to use it alongside my D850, which is my main Nikon camera. And when I would shoot events or work on a reportage project, I like to have two camera bodies. So I was looking for a second body to my D850 for a long time. Then I also tried a Z6, a D780, and all of them worked fine, but I also wanted a second camera body that can also offer something new, something that the D850 cannot do, 
but at the same time I also wanted a camera that I can use on the street alongside my GRs because I kind of miss having a full frame camera for street photography and I used my D850 on the street and in Japan you know it's not a problem you can wear you can wear a big camera no nobody cares but in Germany or in Europe in general it's not as easy you definitely stand out and people start to question your intentions just because you carry a big camera and with the DF, uh, people were very open to have the picture taken. So I think this camera will have the same effect. To be honest, I don't care too much about the retro design. Yes, it looks classic, it looks cool, but I would prefer having a more ergonomic grip. Um, but the dials are actually very useful because you can change the settings before you even turn on the camera. So that's something I kind of missed from my, from my Leica M days. And on my Ricos, it's mostly automatic, uh, shutter priority, auto ISO. And here it's kind of nice being able to set the camera up before I even take the shot. So I think this is going to become a camera that I will use for my street photography, but it can also function as a second camera body uh, next to my D850. So it does kind of serve two purposes. At the same time, it's also kind of awesome that it can shoot video very well, 10-bit video recording, and the colors are nice. Now it's not going to replace my Fujifilm system because I invested in Fujifilm and this is what I'm going to use. But it's nice having that option if I go travel with just this camera, the fact that I can still record high quality videos is kind of nice. Blah, 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 that was a lot. So I'm recording at 6400 ISO. Uh, AFC f2.8 at 10 millimeters and now 18 18 millimeters which oh I think for me this is way too wide I prefer more like 12 yeah like this is 12 millimeters I think this is wide enough for, for vlogging when you use 10 millimeters it starts to distort a little bit too much in my opinion This feels so good. So welcome back. We are at the hotel again. This is the first night from three nights and tomorrow we're actually going to switch rooms. My wife really wanted to be in this room because of the bathtub here and tomorrow we are going to go into a bigger room which doesn't have a balcony. Uh, I'm filming this on the Nikon ZF and with my 28 1.4 F mount lens so I'm not sure if it is focusing on my face or not. This camera is very good in low light, especially when you film. It should look very clean. So what should we talk about first? Uh, the viewfinder, the EVF. Let's talk about the EVF. So I'm a big fan of OVFs, optical viewfinders. That's the reason why I chose the D850 two years ago. And I still prefer an OVF over an EVF, but the EVF on the ZF is really, really nice. I expect it to be disappointed a little bit. Because on paper, this viewfinder doesn't sound so impressive. But it's not too far off from the X-H1 that I also still have. Which I might sell because I have this camera now. The X-H1 has a similar spec viewfinder. And even a higher refresh rate, so it's like 100 frames per second. But on the ZF, it's only 60 frames per second. But somehow, it does feel even smoother than the X-H1. It's kind of weird. And the colors are so natural, it really does... I don't want to say that it looks like real world, but it is so natural and the movement is so smooth and it just looks almost lifelike. Yeah, I'm very positively surprised. Um, that's something that you should try for yourself because, you know, I'm, I'm a skeptic when it comes to EVFs. You know, a friend of mine has the A1, Sony A1, which has 9 million dots of uh, EVF. And to be honest, that EVF looks worse compared to this one. It must be also the glass that Nikon is using. Um, so that's one more observation that I made today. Okay, good morning. It is the next day and it is raining. Perfect. And we're going to go out, eat some fancy breakfast. Uh, my son is going to take a nap, hopefully. Oh, nice. Oh, our next room was already ready. So we already checked in before we leave for the city. And we got a little bit of an upgrade. 
And I already know my son is going to freak out. He will play with this so much. And it really works. It's a real typewriter. I should get sponsored by 25 Hours Hotel because I'm, I'm doing so much uh, advertisement for them. Mm -hmm. A big TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to hide this from my son. There's no TV here in this room. Sorry, son. Yeah, it's raining. Let's go. Let's enjoy Düsseldorf in the rain. In the rain. We are from Hamburg. We are used we to are this. Loser. We are losers. We are losers. <laughs> Driving a loser car. One of the commenters in one of my videos said, ha, he's driving a loser car. As if I care. You know, my self-worth is not defined by what car I drive. Also, we're going to upgrade this car very soon because it's getting a little bit getting too small, becoming too small for us. Did I mention that we are here to eat Japanese food and that Düsseldorf is a little uh, Japan vacation for us? I probably did, I don't remember. This vlog is all over the place. I'm on holidays, I'm on, I'm on vacation. So we're going to have breakfast at a place called Heinemann. Right? Einemann Confessari. Hmm? Düsseldorf is a Japanese, so not little <laughs> yeah, Japanese talk. You know. But we go to, we some, go to German, some German uh, yeah, breakfast to, place. Yeah. And yesterday we had burgers and went to a place called a Beethoven restaurant. <laughs> but today, tonight, we're going to eat sushi. And then tomorrow maybe ramen. Right? Okay, you can cut here. Well, the good thing is this lens is weather sealed, the Sigma lens, and this camera and lens combo is also weather sealed. Oh, yeah. But the problem is if you use a weather sealed camera for filming, hello, <laughs> the microphone is of course not weather sealed, so. What's up? Welcome back. <laughs> so I just filmed a bunch of product close-ups and this is one of the techniques I'm using when I film a POV. Like when I hold something in my hands then this is what I do uh, to make it look like you're seeing through my eyes. How about a quick autofocus test on the Nikon ZF 28 1.4 ISO 640 I'm using a rich tone portrait profile contrast all the way down sharpness all the way down so eye tracking how is it? does it work? I think it works pretty well Okay, now I changed lenses. This is the Nikkor Z28 2.8 SE version. Um, should be a little quieter when it comes to autofocus because it's a, it's a Z-mount lens. It's a more modern lens. How's the autofocus tracking in this one? I had to bump up the ISO to 2500 so you can also see how the image looks like compared to 640. Don't mind this year. My son fell and this is his uh, blood, but uh, nothing serious happened. So, it's definitely a lot, a lot quieter. Okay, rolling shutter tests. So it is Friday night, we just came back, had amazing sushi at Sabi and Gari. And I didn't bring my Fujifilm XS20, I only brought the Nikon Z. 
And I didn't bring my Fuji, I only brought the Nikon ZF with the 28 1.4 and the, the, Vog, the Voigtländer, Vogtländer, 40 millimeter 1.2 and filmed a little bit with it, but um, the autofocus, continuous autofocus, I still haven't figured out the best setup for video when it comes to filming on the ZF. Yeah, anyways, we're going to go to bed now and I see you tomorrow. Good night. You want to say something? <gasps> Which lens should I use today? Maybe this one? Or this one? Yeah, this one is 1.2, manual focus. Ah, but it's not weather sealed. Maybe this one, 28. Mm, a little big. This one is more compact. Mm, but this one is really good to have for low light situations. I don't know, maybe this one and this one. No, I definitely this one. Or oh, this one, or oh, this one, or oh, this one, or oh, this one. Okay, it is Saturday morning and uh, we have to leave in half an hour. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about how I set up my Nikon ZF, how I, what kind of autofocus settings I'm using. And we will also talk a little bit about the diets, how it feels compared to Fujifilm. And if C can be set to auto ISO, spoiler alert, it doesn't work. <laughs> but there's a workaround, which is probably not acceptable for most of you, but I can live with it. So first of all, I really enjoy these uh, light, small pancake-ish, more like cupcake-ish lenses. This is the 28 2.8. I also have the 40 uh, F2 SE version, and they're great because they make the whole setup very light. The camera's pretty heavy because it's magnesium and brass and uh, it feels well made, although a little plasticky on this side here, but it's fine. And yeah, using these smaller and lighter lenses makes a lot of sense. And I'm mostly shooting this camera in manual settings. So I set all the exposure settings on my dials. So let's say 200 here, ISO 200, 125th of a second. And then aperture I would have to change here on the front uh, dial, which is not a huge problem because you can still have your camera on the next strap, rock around the street and then turn the camera quickly on. Just look down at your camera, set it to F8 or whatever you need it to be at. And you can turn off the camera again or you just keep shooting. Of course, it would be preferable to have a lens with aperture rings, maybe, but this is not a big deal to me. So Fujifilm also does have these exposure dials on top of their cameras. X-T5, X-H1 still had it, X-H2 not anymore, but the X-T series has it. So on Fujifilm dials, you have a little A on each dial, so you can quickly turn it to auto which sounds very intuitive. And if you're coming from a Fujifilm camera and you try this Nikon ZF, you might be wondering how do I set uh, auto ISO, for example, or auto shutter speed. Um, for auto shutter speed and auto aperture, you would have to change uh, in a, to a different uh, mode, like aperture priority or shutter priority or P mode. And first I thought this is a little unintuitive, but it actually is very helpful and useful. For example, you don't always need to change your diodes. You can just switch to an A position here for aperture priority or shutter priority. And then you can just ignore the other diodes, which is nice because the moment I want to go back into manual shooting, I just go to N for manual. And then I can, I don't need to, uh, you know, adjust my diodes again. Whereas with Fuji, you always have to turn the diodes back to uh, whatever settings you need. So for me, being able to quickly go to auto, for example, if I'm in the car or somewhere where I can't really use both of my hands, I can quickly switch the camera to auto and then just take a quick snap and go back into manual when I have time to control my camera. So I don't know which one I prefer, but I definitely like the way Nikon is doing it. Now, when it comes to auto ISO, it gets a little weird. So basically the C um, setting here on the ISO dial it's only here for you to be able to change ISO using the spec dial, but you have to set it up into in the camera first. And unfortunately, you can't use this C setting for auto ISO. For auto ISO, you have to go into the menu. So I don't know anymore where the setting was in the menu, but um, I put it in my, uh, my menu. Here in the my menu, I have it on top. And you can see I can switch between auto ISO on or off. So once you turn it on, it doesn't matter where you put, position your ISO dial, you're always at auto ISO. And then you, and then you use the exposure compensation dial to adjust um, the exposure. 
So whenever I want to go back into full manual ISO, then I have to go back to the menu, turn this off, go out of the camera, and then now I can use my dial again. So personally, I'm not too bothered by this because on other Nikon cameras, you had to hold down an ISO button and then turn the front dial to switch between auto ISO and not auto ISO, manual ISO. So yeah, you have to do two steps, but you always had to do two steps on Nikon cameras. Um, but that's how it works. Uh, okay, I promised you to talk about autofocus uh, settings. So um, I use the shutter button to uh, use autofocus. And I set the camera up to AFC and then white L gives me a little uh, rectangle frame. And within this frame, the camera would uh, find eyes or, the fa or faces. So eye tracking, face tracking is also activated. And then I just hold this button and then I can, you know, track the face and then take photos. Uh, but sometimes there are situations where I don't want to focus on a person's eye or face. So what do you do then? You maybe switch to AFS or single point. But uh, another cool way to do this is to assign this back button here to do a different uh, autofocus um, mode. And in order to switch between autofocus settings, I assign this button here on the front. So I'm holding down this button right now and you can see on the top here, it shows me what, what autofocus mode I am in. And I can switch here between different, different things. <laughs> and on this uh, back wheel here, I can switch between uh, manual focus, AFC and uh, AFS and that kind of stuff. So face and eye tracking on this button. And then on this uh, back button here, I set it uh, to do 3D tracking and always using the middle point. So whenever I don't want to use face tracking or eye tracking, I just press this button and then it would just track the middle focus point wherever I point the camera to. And that's for when I want to have more control over my focus point. But I'm still experimenting, but so far this has been working very great for me. Okay, now I switch lenses. Uh, this is the Vogtländer, Vogtländer 40mm 1.2 for Z mount. Um, I bought this lens before I got the camera because I wanted a lens that has an aperture ring and gives me that full manual control. And 1.2 sounded kind of nice. And let me tell you, it is kind of nice. <laughs> so I really do enjoy manual focusing. And this camera has some features in it that no other camera so far um, offers. So the biggest feature is that this camera gives you eye detection while using manual focus lenses. So when you're in manual focusing mode, and it doesn't matter what lens you're using, you can use a lens that does, doesn't have any contact. So a lens that doesn't communicate with the camera it doesn't matter the camera will still give you or show you where the eye is and then you can um, push in and zoom in into your um, frame and then focus right on the eye whenever i use a many focus lens on the zf um, i use this back button for um, zooming in and that is the perfect many focusing workflow in my opinion because i can just concentrate on the frame and then whenever that frame around the eye pops up i just press this back button zoom in Focus, take a photo or multiple photos. And even without using that punch in a zoom in uh, feature, you can still focus on the eye. And then the focus point turns green when you are in focus. It's so much fun, it's so useful. And you can adapt Leica M lenses to this and get the same feature. You can use whatever lens you can adapt on this mount. I think the F mount is one of the most adaptable mounts for many focusing lenses. So many possibilities with this camera.
also immer ab hier. This is my, my weekend vacation vlog. And I got this... Uh, I don't know, I, I have a feeling I'm dying. My channel is dying. Okay, coffee break in the city. I'm here with uh, Schokolade, with chocolate. <laughs> David Chocobin, no. Yeah, just a quick uh, first impression here. Da David uh, used my camera for a little bit. So how was it using the ZF? Well, uh, since you know I'm uh, shooting the yeah. Ricoh GR yeah. like for four years now, or five even, I don't know, yeah. exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. Although I have a like... Yeah, it's not a GR, of course it's not a GR. So. <laughs> no, yeah, and yeah. Um, so what can I say? It's a lot bigger. Of course it's nice to use the viewfinder, viewfinder again when you don't have one on, yeah, the, okay. like on a GR. And uh, what I've seen so far from the picture quality, uh, it looks really nice. And yeah. you already told me about the cheat mode. Yeah, which is basically is just autofocus. Yeah. 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 And you said you said you took the best photo today on this camera. No? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> But this is about luck. You know, I was, uh, if I would yeah. have uh, been with my GR, then... Maybe yeah, not, yeah, maybe yeah. it would have been out of focus, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is like a really a nice camera. But for me, I would need to get adapted again. Mm, yeah. Shooting with the viewfinder. Although I watched you and you just shoot ah. like uh, with a GR, no? Like using. You, you, yeah, you can use it I know, almost course, like a point yeah. and shoot camera. Yeah, yeah which I also it, do yeah. sometimes. But it's nice to have a viewfinder and. It is, yeah. Of course, it's, it's never going to replace so the GR, but... But then again, it's not so... Not so big? The There's no is, grip. Yeah, this is really... Ergonomics are... Not bad. so good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, then but again, it, gets, yeah. it gets the job done, and I, I got photos today that I def definitely cannot get on other cameras. Let's, Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They are not masterpieces, but... To it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess... So, what um, is your overall impression, then? I, yeah. I wouldn't... I wouldn't buy this camera, <laughs> I think, <laughs> because I'm totally addicted to my GR. Um, and you know, I had the Q2, we already yeah, talked about yeah, it. And yeah. again, it's also bigger and I'm getting older. And, <laughs> and I'm really, when I do street photography, I'm out on the streets for hours. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's kind of nice to have just a little camera. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, I only need a GR4 with mm -hmm. a little upgrade and then I'm yeah. perfectly happy. GR4, Rico, please. Please, come on, yeah. please. <laughs> Because if they don't bring out one next year, you might buy a Fuji. M maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe a Fuji. Uh, although I also never shot with a Fuji camera. Mm. But then again, we have Mira here sitting right next to us. <laughs> Who? Who? Mira. I don't see anyone here. <laughs> We can show her camera, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So we show her camera, and then I will put the Instagram. Mira, Let's make a little advertisement uh, here. Yeah. Perfect pictures with the Fuji camera. So actually, it's yeah. not about the camera. Come on, it's like it's like this all no, the time. No, of course not. Yeah. No, no. Okay, we are done here. We are done here. <laughs> <laughs> with an Nikon camera. <laughs> the ZF is also the first camera in the Nikon range that allows for pixel shift shooting, which can produce up to 96 megapixel image by taking multiple shots. That's a feature I haven't tested yet, but I will take a photo here or two to show you how that looks like. This is a feature that I probably won't use a lot, but it is kind of nice to be able to have a higher resolution image if you need it. This is a 20, uh, 24 megapixel sensor here, which is you know great for documenting and street photography. That's plenty resolution. But whenever you need more resolution, you can use that pixel shift uh, feature. You will need to use one of Nikon's softwares um, to actually stitch the images together. You can't do it in camera. I used to take photos of my grandfather's artwork He was a painter and he would ask me to photograph his paintings. If you photograph art pieces, then resolution and color quality is uh, very important. So maybe just having 24 megapixels might not be enough. So in that case, as long as your subject or whatever you're photographing is static and isn't moving, you can use that pixel shift feature and basically get a 96 megapixel file, which is kind of cool, but I probably won't use it that often, but it's nice to have it, so.
It is Sunday morning, by the way. We are checking out very soon. So I might rush this part, but we are, we are almost at the end. Okay, uh, micro SD card slot. You probably heard about it already. If not, the Nikon ZF not only has one SD card slot, it also has... No, not two. It has another slot for a micro SD card. Which is a, it's an interesting decision. I personally really appreciate that because having a backup is better than not having one, right? And in mine, I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card that I'm just going to leave in the camera, treating it as a kind of um, internal storage. So whenever I might forget to bring an SD card, which never happened to me so far, but if it does eventually, then I still have a card in my camera. So for me, micro SD card slot, is a win. Okay, time to give you a little bit of a conclusion, my first impression after using the Nikon ZF for three days. Um, I'm also going to talk about some annoyances and uh, who I think this camera is for, which is probably pretty obvious when you look at it. If you want one, you want one. <laughs> but inside there's actually a lot that even satisfies uh, professional photographers. So my uh, short conclusion is, it's definitely the, the camera that I had most fun with so far taking photos on the street and documenting my family. This is to me a highly efficient snapshot camera. In the same way that the GR for me is the ultimate snap shooter because it's compact, it's, I can carry it everywhere I go. This one not as compact as the GR but very very snappy, very fast. Eye tracking, face tracking, autofocus, it's, it's unreal. But I have no experience using Sony cameras. Maybe Sony's are also that fast, I don't know. But this is, to me, this is next level. Like, I never experienced autofocus this good. Uh, yesterday I was out on the street, taking some photos with my friends. Um, just, you know, trying the autofocus and using eye detection. And uh, whenever someone was in, in the frame, the camera nailed focus. Even when people are walking towards me, it was, it was a very exciting experience because I felt so how do I say, so free maybe, because I could concentrate on my composition and the photos are not that great because, you know, I was basically just walking in the crowd, pointing my camera uh, towards people. And, you know, I would use the, the viewfinder a lot, but I would also sometimes use the back LCD and use the camera, you know, like a snapshot camera, one-handed, which is not very comfortable. This is not a camera to use one-handed. And I would also often have my screen out like that then holding my uh, camera with my left hand and then using my thumb, you know, and then looking down, kind of treating it like a waist level viewfinder of an old, you know, film camera, Roliflex, whatever. And this was such a nice experience. I said to my friends, you know, this feels like cheating. Like, I can't believe I'm allowed to be this fast <laughs> because it makes the whole process easy. And then the thing is, if you don't want it to be easy, you can still use many focus, you know, use all the manual dials and dial in your distance, focus distance. When you use manual lenses, for example, you often have a distance scale. Not with these uh, AF lenses, but you know, I like these lenses for their convenience. And in terms of comparing this to a Fujifilm camera or Leica camera, because it is actually kind of giving you that Leica feel. Uh, maybe a little bit more plastic than Leica, but you have the dials. You have the dials. <laughs> also, how nice is the shutter sound? Yeah, really nice. I would say that Fujifilm still offers more customization options. They are a little bit more ergonomic. And if you want APS-C, which could be something you prefer over full frame, especially for street photography, where you want to have a large depth of field. With a full frame camera, you have to stop down the lens much more just to be able to, see, to have the foreground and background in focus. I would still prefer a crop sensor if the goal is to capture everything in your environment. With a full frame camera, I like to isolate subjects and use the, the lenses wide open sometimes. And you get, of course, much better low light performance. I haven't even mentioned the, the IBIS. The IBIS is very good. It even has a unique feature where the IBIS uh, unit, the sensor, is um, adjusting for the focus point, um, which I think no other camera does so far. Comparing it to Leica, maybe it's, it's not a rangefinder, so it doesn't make sense to compare an SLR style camera to a rangefinder camera. Um, in terms of the experience though, if you want that full menu experience and you don't want to be fast, use a Leica. <laughs> I mean, you can be fast, but you have to stop down the lens and you have to be very good at guessing your distance 
here you can still do the same plus you get all the benefits of modern technology i really don't know why you wouldn't use a camera like this that just works so well on the street while also being a lot of fun and giving you that many experience if you want to so yeah you can tell i'm really excited about this camera i can't wait to use this more so let's talk about the bad stuff the annoying things um there were a few things that surprised me for example sometimes the eye detection wouldn't work and i would have to turn off the camera and on again or switch between the black and white and color mode or movie mode and back to photo mode then the frame would show up maybe this is something that could be fixed via firmware it did happen like four or five times this weekend um, it's not a huge deal but it is it can be a little bit annoying because you're like where's the focus is the focus right ibis as i said works great when you have static objects and you hold your camera still but i think the ibis is uh, creating some motion blur when you use higher shutter speeds because i got some slightly blurry shots at 125th of a second or even 250th of a second which should not really happen this could be linked to whatever ibis setting you set your camera to because in photo mode i use the standard ibis and for video i use ibis uh, boost someone on youtube recommended that you should ibis boost for video maybe you would need to use ibis boost when you do street shooting i don't know there's no option to turn it off oh you can turn ibis off okay so maybe if you turn ibis off when you do street shooting that might be better another thing to keep in mind is the lens selection Nikon doesn't offer a lot of compact prime lenses. Uh, this one and the 28, 2.8 are the only ones that are compact enough to, to, to work well on this camera body. But if you want even more compact lenses, you would need to adapt, let's say, Leica M lenses, for example. So maybe Nikon could work on some small f2 primes with aperture rings. I think they should do that. At the moment, there's, for example, no compact 35. If you're a 35 type of photographer, yeah, you would need to, you have to adapt lenses because they have a 35 1.8, which is a little long. So these are basically the only complaints I have or things that are not as great as they should be. Last point I wrote down in my notes here is uh, that Fuji should be scared. Yes, Fujifilm should be scared because oh, I'm definitely considering switching out all my fuji gear uh, to to nikon gear in the future at the moment i'm so invested in my lovely fujifilm xs20 that i love for filmmaking for video for youtube um, and i'm probably going to keep this setup at least but i might get rid of my xh1 because it doesn't really serve any purpose anymore i can use this camera as my webcam and live stream camera as well the fujifilm xh1 was always my mirrorless weather sealed camera. So whenever it's like very stormy, rainy outside, a typhoon maybe, and I wanna take photos, I would grab that X-H1. It can get wet and it's not a problem. Now that I have this camera that is also weather sealed, this can do the job now. So yeah, X-H1 is probably going to go on sale. I won't upgrade it. Even though I said I will never sell it. But if there's one thing I learned on YouTube doing photography content is never say never. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end this video here. One last shout out to Sigma Germany for sending me this 10 to 80 millimeter uh, 2.8 lens for my Fujifilm XS20. I think it did a great job. It was perfect for this weekend. I would definitely want to keep using it. And as I said in the beginning, there's going to be a part two of this video where I'm going to use the ZF for photography and this lens for videography um, in Denmark on a road trip next weekend. So stay tuned, subscribe if you're new, if you don't wanna miss that. In my next video, I'm not going to focus too much on the technical things because I already did that in this video. The focus is more going to be on the road trip and on the photography, the emotions and capturing life and uh, enjoying life through photography. I think that was deep enough. So <laughs> thanks for watching and I see you in another video very soon. Leave me any questions if if there's something I didn't answer, and I will try to answer them. Okay, bye-bye. If you like what you saw, how about leaving a like and a comment and subscribe? Ah! <lacht> wow! Wow! Ja, weil... Die Seite ist viel zu schnell!